This video is sponsored by Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace to host the channel's official site and merchandise store for about two years now, and compared to building a site from scratch, the difference has been PC and console. The clean UI makes it easy to create and customize content, embed YouTube videos, social media posts, and add new items to our store. A simplified all-in-one platform means you never have to install, patch, or upgrade anything, and I can tell you firsthand their 24-7 customer support is better than most tech companies in the PC space. Don't tell them I said that. Squarespace has everything you need for your next domain, website, or online store. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash bitwit to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Oh, dude, get the camera. So the Craigslist guy got back to me, and he still has the PC for sale. So, I mean, I, I already went to the ATM this morning. We're pretty much good to go, and he wants to meet now down the street. So, are you good to go? Okay, let's go. Let's buy a gaming PC. Ooh. I hope he doesn't try to rob us at gunpoint or something. Although I wouldn't even be mad, because I'd be like the most badass tech geek ever. Anyway, let's go. How's it going? Hey. Thanks for meeting me here. Appreciate it. Aren't you the YouTube guy? Yes. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah, I like, just uh, saw a video, like one of your videos like recently. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice, nice. It's, it's a still a decent gaming PC, right? I mean, it's all functional, you said? Yeah, yeah it's totally Okay, cool. All right, so now that we're able to take a closer look at John's PC here, why the heck are we even doing this? Well, for starters, it's a terrible time to build your own rig, at least buying new parts, right? I mean, memory prices are ridiculously insane. GPU prices have nearly tripled across the board. So perhaps buying a used system off of a secondhand website like Craigslist offers a viable alternative if you're trying to get your foot into the door to PC gaming here in 2018. So let's take a closer look at this rig. Taking a look here, we've got, um, this is a, a Corsair chassis that we're rocking with. What, what model is it exactly? The 100R. The 100R, so it's very nice, uh, very um, popular budget case, right, mm -hmm. for that price point. And inside, correct me if I'm wrong, but we've got a Core i5-3570K in here. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's obviously Ivy Bridge, and is that paired with a Z77 motherboard? Yes. Okay, cool. So you have probably overclocked it a bit? Yeah, to 4.1. 4.1 gigahertz, yeah. awesome. And it uh, looks like we're being cooled. That's being cooled by a Hyper 212. Mm -hmm. So that's a very nice price performance cooler there. Honestly, it's a pretty decent looking system. We've got, uh, is that 16 gigs of RAM? Looks yes. like DDR3. Yeah, 16 gigs. Okay, what, what, what happened here? We've got one, one, okay. uh, one outcast. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on there? Uh, so like, originally, I, the, this uh, came with like a bundle. Uh -huh. uh, like when I bought like the case like a while ago. Okay. I, or, and so, yeah, and then gotcha. I just I just ended up buying the three other ramps. Makes sense. Hey, you know, it, it, if it's functional, it <laughs> yeah. works. It works. It works. And then we've got a Radeon uh, HD seventy eight fifty. Is that what this is? Okay, cool. Well, awesome, dude. This looks great, and like you said, it, it's it should be working fine. So, if that's cool, um, let's see. We, we what, let's do what we came to do. Here <laughs> is five hundred and fifty dollars. You can count it. Uh, you know, after after we leave. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but uh, it should be all there, and I'll take this off of your hands and start testing it. I'm, I'm honestly very excited to see what a four-year-old system for $550 can do here in 2018. Yeah. John, thank you very much for your business, sir. Thank you so much. Very excited to see how this turns out. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, have, have fun with your money. Go, go and spend it wisely. Make good life choices. Okay, let's get the hell out of here before we get kicked out by coffee beans. All right, we're back here at the studio. We got this thing hooked up. I have not turned it on yet. So I wanted to share this first boot with you guys, um, assuming that it does boot. So with that said, let's, let's, let's turn this thing on. Uh oh, is power supply on? Power supply is not on. Thank God that scared the crap out of me. <laughs> it's not over yet. <laughs> Just getting started. Fans are spinning. I hear it, I hear it gearing up. Let's get a video signal. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but this is an MSI Radeon HD 7850 that we're dealing with. Good old MSI. When their cards were not just black and red. This one actually has some blue accents on it. 
single 90 millimeter fan, I want to say, either 80 or 90, but fairly quiet system. Again, we only have two case fans in here, a 120 at the front, a 120 at the rear, and obviously the, the very quiet Hyper 212 doing its thing. GPU, of course, is the fan spinning up there. This was long before the zero RPM uh, feature that we see in a lot of current gen cards. No signal detected. That's not good. Hold on, let me let me double check connections here. Don't freak out. Everyone stay calm. Just stay calm, all right? HDMI one. Yes, we have a boot and we're installing Windows updates. Lovely. Okay, well, that's, that's good. Um, I wanted to jump into the BIOS right away just to see what John had done with the system so far, but we're clearly gonna have to wait a minute for this to finish, so be right back. It is very nice that Windows 10 came pre-installed. That's, that's kind of a nice feature, and it looked like it was activated, so bonus value add right there. Now, some other things to mention about this system while we're waiting for Windows to update is that we are booting off of an SSD. I think we have a 250 gig Samsung 850 Evo, which is a great drive, awesome bang for the buck, outstanding value, paired with a mechanical hard drive. Not exactly sure what the capacity is there. I would imagine anywhere from 500 to a terabyte. And then we have a TR2 600 watt power supply from Thermaltake, which is really the only part of this system that truly concerns me just because it doesn't look like it's 80 plus certified in any way. And these older Thermaltake power supplies have been known to not be the most reliable. That being said, I'm sure we'll be able to get through this video without too much issue. Aesthetics wise, uh, you, you can't really expect too much from a budget build like this. Let's see if we can get to the BIOS here. But I will point out that the one stick here is driving my OCD up the wall. Additionally, cable management could be improved. Obviously, he doesn't have a ton of options inside of this budget Corsair case. However, I feel like something like this uh, SATA cable here could have been tucked behind the motherboard tray just to make it a little bit more tidy. And obviously, ketchup and mustard cables don't make anything easier. So, but that's not what we're here to talk about, people. We're here to just witness these Windows updates for all eternity, apparently. And here we are. Going into our overclock settings, we can see that he's adjusted the CPU ratio to 41, giving us a core clock speed of 4.1 gigahertz. Lovely. Doesn't look like he's, let's see, DRAM operating at 1600. Looks like CPU core voltage he's left on auto. He hasn't fiddled with the V core at all. But, uh, you know, at 4.1 gigahertz, overclock is fairly moderate for a 3570K but I can see why he didn't push it that much further because at the end of the day, we are gonna be slightly limited by that Hyper 212 cooler. So let's keep the overclock for now and boot back into Windows. So I stand corrected. The SSD is actually 120 gigabyte capacity. So um, half of what I thought it was still perfectly fine for a budget gaming PC. At least there is uh, some NAND flash storage in here that we can boot off of. We also have a one terabyte mechanical hard drive. So I was right about that. Um, obviously everything is, is wiped clean here. There are no pre-installed games apart from League of Legends apparently, which I don't even have an account for that, nor do I play it or test it. So we can't really do much with that. But what we can do is I can plug in my external SSD that's loaded up with all of my Steam games and we can actually do some testing on this system to see what kind of gaming performance it will yield. Let's do that now. All right, so I have jumped into Doom. We're playing at medium settings right now. And you can see sort of our diagnostics here. We are using OpenGL as opposed to Vulkan with about 30 to 40 FPS right now in this, in this uh, part of the game, which is very playable. There's hardly any dips below 30 FPS, none that I've really felt. And you can also see our temperatures here. We're getting around 62 degrees Celsius on the GPU in our low 50s, in the low 50s for the CPU, both of which are very respectable figures, nothing to be alarmed of. And you can also see that we are operating at 4.1 gigahertz on the 3570K, so that's good. Uh, the other thing I'd mention is that the GPU has two gigs of VRAM, which is getting maxed out at the moment, uh, more or less. And make no mistake, that's going to hurt us a bit in certain games. Right now, I think we're okay, but that does seem to be a limiting factor here. A two gig frame buffer is just not what it used to be. I should also mention we're gaming at 1080 right now, so definitely not gonna be able to handle anything beyond full HD at this point with the current hardware. The other thing that surprises me about this system is how much memory we're actually using. Granted, I do have a couple diagnostic tools running in the background, obviously, but those don't eat up a lot of memory on their own. But still, we're using about seven gigs of RAM. 
And the fact that I'm gonna try to build a competing system for the same price, $550 in a part two video, I thought I was gonna be able to get away with four gigs of RAM. It looks like I'm probably gonna have to get at least eight gigs in there. And as you guys know, as I mentioned before, memory is not cheap right now. So that's definitely gonna set me back for when I try to build my own DIY rig. I should also mention that I have not overclocked the GPU in any way, although I did max out the power limit in MSI Afterburner, just to give us a little bit of headroom there. On that note, guys, it looks like I've killed all of the demons. So let's go ahead and run some proper benchmarks in a number of different titles so we get a better overall idea of how this thing performs. One hour later. All right, the benchmarks have spoken and the results were actually pretty impressive. I'll start with the least impressive stuff first and that was with Doom. Uh, we were running at medium settings at 1080p. All the games that we tested were at 1080p and we got an average frame rate of 43 with 1% lows of 26. Anytime the 1% lows are less than 30 frames per second, you typically see a little bit of stuttering in game, which I did eventually notice more of uh, after that little cutaway that I showed you earlier. But we can still tweak the settings here. We can go down to low. We could even game at 720p if that's something that the user is open to. Uh, and even with some GPU overclocking, I'm sure that we could get that to a playable level. Moving on to Metro Last Light, we saw an average frame rate of 53 and a 1% low of 40 FPS, which indicates a pretty decent gameplay experience. However, I didn't actually play the game because I just ran the canned benchmark. But judging from the numbers, this should play just fine. And then the most impressive, I think, was GTA 5 and Battlefield 1, where we saw average frame rates of 60 FPS or higher and 1% lows well beyond 30 frames per second, actually in the mid 40s, which is super strong. So what this all says in a nutshell is that this is more than adequate for PC gaming. It's, it's ready to go, especially for the price. The big question here is whether or not I can build a brand new system that outperforms this one for the same price. And that of course will be something we follow up with in part two. So stick around for that guys, but that's all I got for now. So if you enjoyed the video, actually this was super fun. Let me know what you thought of this whole Craigslist thing, picking up a, a random PC from a total stranger and just putting it through its paces, I thought was super enjoyable. Hopefully it was enjoyable for you guys to watch. If it was, toss a like on it, leave your feedback below, get subscribed to Floatplane if you wanna watch all of our content a week early without ads, and I will see you guys in the next video.